Hi there, I'm Neppy and I love to invest, hence the title of my channel, Neppy Invests. There it is down there. Look, I'm pointing to it right now. Neppy Invests. Anyway, uh, one of the reasons I love to invest is when I research companies like Brainship, I discover the potential of those these sort of companies. Um, very exciting what they do. In the last month or so, uh, the stock market has, or the market in general, has taken notice of what Brainship is doing, and day traders have really taken notice too. It's become one of their playthings. So we've seen just the share price uh, act like a, you know, like a roller coaster, just a crazy ride of ups and downs. Particularly, the ups have been much more than the downs, but we've also seen some big down days, just like a roller coaster. So what I'm going to show you now is a video clip of Mr. Bean riding a roller coaster. <clears throat> and in many ways, we have to be like Mr. We, we strive to be like Mr. Bean riding a roller coaster. Because when you think of it, a roller coaster and a stock market are very, you know, have very similar characteristics. So just like now, you're seeing a roller coaster go up, just like the stock market, not much emotions in that. But when it drops, a violent drop like what we're going to see now, is it can really play havoc with our emotions. It can be quite scary, just like those women behind Mr. Bean. But if you look at Mr. Bean, no emotions whatsoever. So ideally, and this is an idealistic um, scenario, is we want to have very little emotions when we make investment decisions. It should be based off facts and that sort of thing. And um, so that's why we have to be like Mr. Bean, riding the roller coaster, show no emotions, um, because those down days can be quite scary and you can make bad decisions on those down days. So be like Mr. Bean. Not in other facets of life though, don't be like Mr. Bean. So what I've got here is just a month worth of uh, trading days. So each day here is listed and we've got the change in percentage in the second last column and the volume in the last column. Those are two things, the most important things here. So. During this period of time, we've seen share price increase from 17.5 to 49 cents, which is a three bagger, or it's gone up three times. So it's, uh, shareholders should be happy with that. But it's been as high as 97 cents, so it's almost halved from its high. We've seen seven trading days of plus 10%, which is very interesting because when they say, when you look at your portfolio over a whole year, sort of a typical gain you should have is 10% for your whole portfolio over a whole year. In seven days in the past month, we've seen 10% increases in brain chip. We've also seen two training days of greater than 10% loss, including a 27% day on the 15th of September, which was on the Tuesday. Uh, ranges go from 53% increase to a decrease of 27%. And in that last column, I mentioned the volume, we've seen a massive increase in volume, a huge increase in volume. And to me, that's a couple of signs, or one big sign in particular. And if you look at the 9th of September, that was an insane day of intraday volatility. So we saw the share price open at 72.5 cents, reach a high of 97% really quickly. So it went up almost so over 30% in um, almost 40% in a very short period of time, reached 97%, the high of what we've seen with the share price of Brainship. Then it dropped 35 cents, so that's uh, 35% in a very quick time, and then it rebounded back to 75 cents. On that day, that extreme intraday volatility day, we saw 367 million shares traded. So SOI, SOI means shares outstanding, or shares on issue. And that's 25% of the shares on issue, which is, to me, a massive sign that day traders have gotten hold of this company, Brainship, because day traders love volatility. I'm, I'm pretty sure on the 9th of September they were having wet dreams or jizzing their pants because that was, oh, that was probably their dreams come true on that day. So when I say it's a day trader play thing, so this is a 15 minute chart. So one of these candlesticks is uh, every 15 minutes. And on the 2nd of September, that's when things just shifted. So that was only two weeks ago. 
there was an announcement on that day. Uh, we saw a big increase in share price, and I think no doubt day traders saw that big increase in share price, big increase in volume, and they just entered on force. Just ran into this company, uh, so day traders came in, um, bullish long-term holders came in, maybe new people who have just haven't heard of Brainship before came in, got excited, and we saw it start to rise up quite quickly. We saw a massive increase in volatility, intraday volatility on the 9th, and that's when we saw the shift in sentiment from up to down. So rapid shift in sentiment. And right now on the 16th of September, yeah, today's the 16th, we've seen short-term sentiment shifted to the downside. We saw today it opened near the, near the bottom, around 39 cents, rose back up to the 20-minute moving average, and then as soon as it hit that, it's a bit of resistance there, which is sort of the, also almost the share price that it closed on the 15th, it's then pulled back again. So maybe uh, if you are wanting to look at, to buy into brain chip, maybe just look for a short-term sentiment to shift back upwards before you buy in. I'm not an expert, so uh, don't take my advice, but that's something you might want to look at. So we know the stock market can be volatile, um, especially when you compare to other sort of investments like cash, bonds, uh, property, that sort of thing. Stock market can be very volatile. So individual companies can be highly volatile, but when you get to the small cap companies like brain chip, especially like brain chip, uh, share price can be extremely volatile. So brain chip doesn't have much fundamentals. And when I say fundamentals, I mean they have no revenue or very little revenue. Their future revenue is all in the future. Well, that makes sense. Their revenue is all in the future. And so what's happening now is a lot of long-term investors, believers in the company, have a lot of hope. And that can be a risky thing, that hope. Or day traders can just you know play with that hope. Um, and that's why you see a lot of volatility. So a lot of hope. Um, so when you're talking about psychology of, of investors, there's there's fear, greed, hope. When you're relying on hope, that hope can be extremely dented when you have rapid decreases in price. And that's what day traders are trying to play on, is trying to erode uh, long-term holders' hope trying to make you question why you're holding a company because they want you to sell, they want you to sort of play into their hopes for volatility. So very important to try to detach your emotions from your decision making. So if you've done a if you got if you drew up in a thesis about brain chip, um, you're pretty solid about your thesis, try to don't let the short term share price movements uh, Make it change your decision making. So you don't look at the noise. So short-term movement in share price is noise. If there's no fundamental news, if there's no news, short-term share price movements is just noise. So don't make any decisions based based off those short-term movements unless there's always an unless or but there's some some reason, some fundamental reason they release some news, positive or negative. And that might sway you either to buy or sell. So any share price movement that doesn't uh, isn't caused by news, uh, you should ignore that. It's just noise. So when it comes to strategies, if you're holding like brain chip and you're getting a little bit nervous, there are a few strategies. Trying to ride a roller coaster like Mr. Bean can be really hard. Detaching your emotions can be really hard. Um, I know for a fact, especially if you look at the share price every single day, some people will look at the share price uh, every single hour, every 10 or 15 minutes. That is, not I wouldn't say dangerous, but that's going to affect your emotions to a huge extent. And that's why I've got number four there, ignore the short share price movement. If you don't have to look at the share price every single day, try not to, especially if you believe in the long-term future of a company, just ignore it. Um, don't ignore it for a whole year, that's to the extreme on the other side. I do look at share prices every single week, at least. Um, and the main reason I do it is just look at shifts in sentiment. Another strategy is to free carry. So free carry, got an example here, so free carry, 
it's it's a strategy some people use. Um, I'm not the hugest fan of free carry, but I've done it before. But uh, so an example here: so you buy hundred thousand shares at ten cents, so that's ten thousand dollars worth of shares. Say the share price goes up ten to fifty cents, and you get a bit nervous uh, that it might drop and you might lose, you know, some value there. You could sell out twenty thousand shares at fifty cents, which is your original value of your investment, ten thousand dollars, and then what they say is you free carry that 80, the other eighty thousand shares. So that eighty thousand shares is sort of your original cost base. You haven't, you can't make a loss with this company anymore. That's it, because you've taken your original investment out, and that means there's no longer any possibility you could lose any money, but. That 80,000 shares at 50 cents is still $40,000. And even though it's free curry, it's not free. It's there. You can take it all out. Yeah, it's $40,000. That's a new um, car. It's maybe not a new Tesla, but it's a new car. So it's a lot of money. It's not It's not the um, house money. It's your money. So that's the reason why I'm not the biggest fan of free curry. I have done it before, but I think... Problem with free carrying is you might lose sight that that's actually real money, your money, and I still think your emotions will get the better of you if you can't control them. Another strategy is just to sell and buy an ETF or something less volatile, uh, put your money in cash. So if you can't handle volatility, company like Brainship is not the best thing to have. So really understanding your risk tolerance is very important to setting up your investment strategies. I think this is one of the most important things. Um, so if your risk, if you have a high risk tolerance like I do, um, rapid increases in share price or rapid decrease in share price really doesn't affect me as much as someone who has very low risk tolerance who they just can't sleep if if one of their shares goes down 10% of the day, they just can't, they lose sleep, they just can't handle it. Um, that's a bad thing. So I think understanding your risk tolerance is very important to knowing what strategies, your investment strategies you have moving forward. And I would say in that sort of case, Brainship maybe isn't the company for you, which can be a problem. It's not a good thing because if you really believe in Brainship, um, risk tolerance shouldn't be a factor, but it can be because you might make some bad decisions. So, for example, bad decision would be if you bought, say, at 30 cents, it went down to 15 cents, even though you believe in the company, you sell out because it scares you, and then a year later, you look back and the share price is $3. So you made a bad decision because of short-term movement in price, because your risk tolerance is low, you made a bad decision, even though you've done the work, you think the long-term future of the company is very bright, and that short-term movement in share price has just scared you out of, out of selling the stock. So... Understanding your risk tolerance is very important in investments. So that is all for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video of NetPe Invests. No, I'm not an expert, so anything I've told you now, eh, don't take it uh, at face value. Um, seek out a professional if you need advice. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed doing it, even though my mouth is getting a bit dry now. See you later.